When we opened, it was we couldn't afford to take any staff on, so we didn't know how it was going to be. The majority of our customers have been with us for, for the six years, but at the beginning it was hard. Six years down the line, it's buzzing. We're doing more and more projects for different age groups. They have cooking classes, they have craft classes, they've had uh, classes where people can come and make jewellery. There's a whole range of things, really. A lot of the the older customers that come here, this is their meeting point for the week. They don't get to go out and socialise, so this is where they come and can meet people and make a lot of friends. For us, it was always going to be a social enterprise and there was a, a massive focus on that we weren't going to be entirely funding driven. So we have learners that come to us and say how long can they stay and for me, I didn't want the answer to that to be the outputs of another organisation that were funding us. Mascot is Manchester and Stockport Community Organising Training. So you can do level 2 or level 3 accreditation in that. And it's open for everyone in the community to learn how to engage with their community. A lot of conversations I have are, well volunteers don't cost anything, why is that in your budget? Well, that is a naive comment at best. This year we're hoping to work towards investing in volunteers and we believe we're the only organisation of our type in Stockport to be looking towards that standard. Pretty much trying to convince young people to, rather than use loan sharks, try and team up with a credit union. And we run credit union now out of the coffee shop. We're just saving generally at the moment for a rainy day. We run separate IT sessions all throughout Stockport which are free to users. It is about bridging gaps. We do about 14 sessions a week and a variety of different community learning hubs. I think it's about 800 learners a year that we have for different age groups. We've got things like Coder Dojo, where some of our digital ambassadors come along and help kids to code. We've got the digital inclusion online basics, which tends to be the more older people, kind of looking at how they can use the computer to learn other things as well. They all seem to know what they're talking about. They all know, certainly know a lot more than I know about it. George is one of our older learners. He's doing fantastic, he's made massive progress because he has got dementia. He has to get two buses to, to get over to us. I am staggered and quite, quite humbled really at the lengths that some people come to to get to Woodley. I hope that that means that what we're doing works and it's right for them. A lot of what's happened around here is due in no part to Anne Wallace, OBE, who's the lady that's really been a driving force behind the whole of this and has given, I think it's fair to say, has given to Woodley through her sheer hard work, together with the hard work of all the volunteers and everybody that works here permanently, has given Woodley a real shot in the arm. It's kind of seeing that, that moment when they think, oh, and they get it and they see something that's so helpful and it explains something. If you can get that with everybody at least once when they come, then I suppose it makes it uh, rewarding. It's a social life. I'm disabled, I'm at home a lot. And I come here and you get a wider range of people that you know and, uh, and you soon find you've got friends and everybody's welcome. There's plenty to learn here. There's a mammoth amount of information in these uh, four walls. Fridays is my life coming here and I won't stop it. So our future is to find another space on the west side of Stockport, but doing exactly what we do now, but possibly in a slightly different setting, offering informal adult learning, encouraging people to skill share and stay in grassroots and not doing for people what they can do for themselves. I once said, before we did all this, every day was exhausting and every day is exciting now.